welcome to our new video. In our previous discussion, we learned that mixture is classified into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. A heterogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the components of the mixture are not uniform or not evenly distributed. On the other hand, a homogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the components that make up the mixture are uniformly distributed or evenly distributed throughout the mixture. For example, if we're going to mix water and salt, we will have a solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture. Since it is a homogeneous, the components of the salt solution cannot be easily identified. Now there are two components of solution, solute and solvent. The solute is the dissolved medium, while the solvent is the dissolving medium of the solution. In the salt solution, salt is the dissolved component or the solute, while water is the dissolving component or what we call the solvent. We use many solutions in our daily life such as the solutions of sugar and milk, coffee, lemon juice and water. The solution can be classified on the state of matter of their components. Any state of matter such as solid, liquid or gas can act both as a solute and as a solvent during the formation of a solution. Therefore, depending on the physical state of solute and solvent, we can classify solutions into different types. Solubility refers to whether or not a solute will dissolve in a solvent. The rate of this solution is affected by several factors such as particle size, steering, and application of heat. You will see that the cube in cold water does not dissolve at all, but the sugar cube in the hot water rapidly disintegrates. For most solids like sugar and salt, an increase in temperature means an increase in solubility. The dissolving of a solid occurs more quickly at a higher temperature, but the amount of solid that can be dissolved may increase or decrease with increased temperature. Temperature changes have direct effect on the solubility of solids and gases. The way gas escapes in the form of bubbles from soda is affected by temperature. More bubbles form and rise to the surface in the soda placed in hot water than in cold water. Dissolved gas comes out faster in warm water than in cold water. That's why people store soft drinks in refrigerators to prevent gas, specifically carbon dioxide, from easily escaping the solution. Gases behave quite differently from solids. It is typical for gases dissolved in aqueous solutions at ordinary pressures to exhibit decreasing solubility with increasing temperature. For gases, an increase in temperature results in increased kinetic energies of gas particles dissolved in liquids. These increased motions enables dissolved gas to break intermolecular forces with the solvent. On the other hand, pressure also affects the solubility of the gas. Pressure has significant effect on the solubility only for gases in a liquid system. When pressure is applied to gas above the solvent like water, the gas will move into the solvent and occupy some of the spaces between the particles of the solvent. When a can of carbonated soft drinks is opened, the pressure in the soft drinks is lower. Hence, the gas starts to leave the solution immediately. This is manifested by the release of stored carbon dioxide through fissing, which could be seen on the surface of the liquid. Once this gas is released, the beverages become flat due to the loss of carbon dioxide. Bubbles will come out from the opened can. The bubbles carry with them the gases stored in the liquid soft drink solution. If there is a lot of gas in the space above the solvent, then there would be more gas particles colliding with the surface of the liquid because the more gas, the higher the pressure of the gas. 
The more collision with the solvent, the greater the possibility of dissolving. Hence, the solubility of gas increases with increased pressure of the liquid. Now, how do substances dissolve? The solute particles are usually surrounded by solvent particles. This process is called solvation. Solvation is an interaction between the solute and the solvent. Now, let us perform this activity. You will be needed the following materials. For our procedure, you need to put 20 ml of water in one of the plastic cups. Add 1 half teaspoon of salt and stir. Observe the appearance of the solution. Add again 1 half teaspoon of salt, one small portion at a time and stir the solution to dissolve the salt. Now you have added 1 teaspoon of salt. Add another 1 half teaspoon of salt to the solution and stir the solution. Now you have added 1 and 1 half teaspoon of salt. Now continue adding 1 half teaspoon of salt to the same container until the added salt no longer dissolves. In this activity, you have worked with what is called a saturated solution or the solution that contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solvent. If more solute is added to the solvent and comes to the point when no solute longer dissolves and reaches its saturation point, then it is evident that the solution is already saturated. We can also speed up the dissolving process of the excess solute through heating, stirring, or shaking. This causes more solute to dissolve than it would at a lower temperature. But as the solution cools, the excess solute crystallizes out, leaving a saturated solution. Now, the saturated solution is one of the three types of solution. The other two types are unsaturated and supersaturated. A saturated solution is a solution that contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solvent at a specific temperature. An unsaturated solution is a solution that contains less solute than the amount of solvent it can dissolve at a given temperature. On the other hand, if you add more solute to the saturated solution, the solution has reached its saturation point, then the presence of excess solid which can no longer be dissolved is evidence that the solution is super saturated. A simple test can be done to identify whether a solution is unsaturated, supersaturated, or saturated. Add a sugar crystal as your solute to a glass of water to form a sugar solution. If the sugar crystal dissolves in the solution, then the solution is unsaturated. If you add another spoonful of sugar, then it does not dissolve. The solution is saturated. If more sugar crystals are added, causing the sugar crystals to come out, then the solution is super saturated. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.